Alex. It's a pleasure for me to meet you here at WordCamp Europe and uh, to know more about your work, about your multi-site work. Um, can you tell us uh, uh, your multi-site history? Uh, how did you? Uh, how did you? How have you got involved in multi-site development at all? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, first of all, and yeah, I'm. Thanks for the invitation. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I started working with multi-site about well, almost, well, three and a half years ago, I would say. Um, I and I, that was. I was. I hadn't hadn't been part of the WordPress community back then, but uh, I had. I got a um, client that uh, was. Um, a producer of music events like festivals and concerts and, um, and um, so uh, well I have to admit I took over this project so there was already multi site I didn't set it up from scratch um, um, yeah it was a it, it was it was a multi network actually where they uh, had um, they had they had one network for the core site of that event producer which has all the events. Then they have another network, which, and that network actually only had one site, mm -hmm. but it was the root site of this whole setup. And and then um, it had a second network for festival sites, which is kind of like maybe comparable to WordCamp Org, uh -huh. because they have these different festivals. Like we have different WordCamps, and they also have it every year. So we have different work, and it, so it's pretty much the same. Like. Uh, Domain, uh, like it always has a year, the festival, and the. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so that was the second network, and the point of you doing it that way was um, that they. that there, there was also like a festival theme, which was specifically, particularly useful for that role, well, for the festivals, um, and we used that same theme across the whole network. Mm -hmm. um, and make made it like customizable so that the pages look the pages look sites look different, but they all pretty much have the same kind of content, mm -hmm. and all the post types are, are, were also similar, and that's why it made sense to use multi network for for that for that setup because like the festival sites were completely different from the main site which had like regular concerts, mm -hmm. uh, not yeah, and and, then, and there was this third network which I barely touched I have to say um, which was like well, they had they had part of it. Mm -hmm. that also had to work but yeah that and that client got me interested or got me confronted me with multi-site and and even multi-network and uh, but you didn't have any you haven't got any experience before uh, no uh, well with wordpress i have but that was but my, my multi-site yeah <laughs> and how did you, uh, how did you feel for the first time um, was it really complicated or it was all right then uh, well, the, the, I mean, the good thing is, like I said, I didn't have to set it up. Right. Uh, I, I got I got to experience how it works slowly because it was running already. Of course, like when the issues came up, at first I was like, okay, what is this? I had to find out how sometimes how things work. Um, but yeah, it, I I think that well, the, the, at least the core concept of Motorset is not that complicated. So um, yeah, I. I guess I got around it when I needed to. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so this was your starting point. Right? Yes. And uh, can you think of uh, some particular project uh, that you developed, uh, that you made, uh, that you're particularly proud of? So well, what we did is it's it's it was it was for the same client. We, we started like it's. It's not directly related to multi-site, but we did uh, build a, well, a, an app uh, using Ionic framework, like a hybrid. Well, it was a hybrid mobile app, mobile app for that client, where we connected to the REST API of all these sites, and so we built like a single. It was like a single GitHub project, which we then reused for all the different festival apps. And, but we also have like one aggregate app that is for the entire multi site Like you have for WordCamps at Apple Store? Uh, I haven't actually used that app. Uh -huh. No, I don't know. But, uh, possibly, yeah. But uh, you managed to, to get with REST API uh, yeah. the information from all that multi site network websites and yeah. combine them into the app? Yes, we had that, but we also had separate apps. 
uh, for for the festivals. But yeah, it was, but it was all connected. Depending on whether sometimes users just wanted to go to one festival, but some some maybe they're more interested and they want to show the experience. But it was all managed by one of the co-pays. Uh -huh. Yeah. Pretty much like, you could argue like maybe the, it was almost like the festival apps were just like one side of the motor side and the, yeah, the whole thing was the whole motor side. Right. And yeah, and that was a fun, that was an interesting project. Uh, yeah, well, it was, of course, one, for one part it was the mobile app which was built with JavaScript, JavaScript framework based on Angular back then. Um, and then the rest of the integrations, which expand, but for to a huge extent, they expand the singles individual sites, but also multi-site, the whole network. And we needed to deal with um, some, with uh, like users, for example. We we did we we offloaded the whole um, sign up and authorization process to Facebook API because all these people are young there at Facebook, so why not use that? <laughs> and and uh, so we connected like the. Sign up, sign up flow in WordPress and authorization by using the Facebook API. And because, yeah, because the REST API doesn't really have secure authorization at that point. It's really hard to implement it with OAuth 2, so we just use Facebook <laughs> to get that done. But, and they were just fun fun projects that, that, were, that were part of this whole thing. Um, like we had, a, there was a, we had built an interactive, uh, interactive map of of uh, of each for each festival. There was an interactive map that the designer created an image for. We used the Google Maps API to overlay it at the right uh, coordinates. Uh -huh. You know, like you can put a big picture uh -huh. of over the Google Map, and, and and then we had an interface in the WordPress backend where the Organizer of the festival could log in and place pins. Pins. Oh, into, and, and this was across and, the whole multi-site network. Uh, yes. So yeah, and and it was all fetched from there, and yeah, displayed in the mobile app. Uh, now, when this project uh, is in production, right? yeah, uh, when it's functional and uh, ready, uh, how do you feel? Was it a good decision to choose multi-site? Are there any uh, other ways to do what you've done? Um, at, well, you could probably, we would absolutely use, well, you can always use individual sites for that, but I think, um, and I, I think uh, you could have, you could possibly have used a multi-site for only the festival part and then a single site for the other. But um, the managing, the maintenance won't be that it, exactly. so easy. The best part of, I think, the main argument for using the multi-network there was the consistent user base. Mm -hmm. Like we can, we just easily have all the users in sync. If you have an account with that one festival, you can easily use the same account for each other festival or the main. So site. user don't have to, uh, doesn't have to register for each festival. Yes. Uh, yeah. Every time, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and you could. We didn't. We didn't actually do that. But I, right. I'm just now thinking you could. You could have done something like maybe someone favorites an artist, and then in the next festival they still have their favorite artist or something like that. Yes, there <laughs> yeah. is a, a whole area for customization and for providing more, more yeah. interesting solutions for the client and user. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Great. And do you remember any obstacles? Some that you can predict predictable obstacles or not predictable that. Uh, Came out uh, during development. Um, I have to think. Uh, not actually. Well, may, may said may sound like a miracle, but not related to multi-site. <laughs> that, really, that, that really sounds like a miracle. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It, it was. Uh, it was tricky getting the authorization in place uh, with, with the book. Yes, yes, <laughs> but but it was but it was not really related to multi-site no. like in WordPress in general in connected connected with the Facebook. That sounds very inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you feel? Is it a good solution at all for? Like well, like I said, I'm sorry, sorry, um, but like I said, I um, the the, oh, si the, the setup was in place. Okay. So initially, so I um, well, I did not have to fight like. Uh, like for example, uh, detecting which site we're on in a multi-network. I know now that it's not that trivial, 
but that was already done before I jumped in the project. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has prepared this. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, uh, how do you feel now? Is it a good solution at all for any other company in that uh, area, in the niche, organizing events uh, and uh, not just music festivals and yeah. music events, but any other kind of events to use motorcycle for their needs? Uh, absolutely. If you, uh, I, I will. I mean, I there think... are some ticket aggregators and everything that can yeah. use actually the motorcycle. Do I get it right? Sorry. Do I do I get it right that? Uh, we can easily put a ticket aggregator or any event agency at all to use multi-site with success. Um, I, yeah, I, th I think um, I think for every any kind of any kind of event that like reoccurs in some period of time, like annually, for example, um, they usually don't change that much. Mm -hmm. Like well, we're, like I said, WordCamp is a perfect example of that. Um, their websites, they, they also have a base theme that you can just uh, tweak a little bit um, and they reuse it everywhere. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure from the top of my head if, 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 it's in, if it's in the same environment that WordPress is work and the rest of it is, but it may be. Well, I know, at least I know that WordPress, uh, the WordPress of work website is for everything around it, this is a local network. Right. So the, so the word camp part could be a method. I'm not sure if it's actually true. But it, absolutely but it would be a valid, it's a very perfectly valid use case for that. Yes, but uh, we know for sure that it's multi-site. Yes. At least. Yes, right? absolutely. And that's another uh, yeah. example of using multi-site to network uh, company. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah, well, I also, um, I, I am, a, yeah. I'm obviously now a large, a huge fan of Molten Network because I was exposed to it. Um, at the same part time while, while learning website, I in immediately had to learn Multi Network, mm -hmm. um, which uh, is an even bigger edge case than multi site. But uh, and I think you should think twice before you set up Multi Network. Like that, that is uh, a use case where you which you need much, much more, much uh, less frequent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but uh, I, I would say, like like I mentioned, I, I would say at this at the point of the festival website was mostly the consistent user base that was mm -hmm. the argument for using the network. Um, but uh, I think the main uh, the main scenario I would I can think of is like universities, like like with Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Like a classical example now. Huh? Like a classical example now. Yes. Right? Like university is perfect for multi network. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have a thousand multi sites to manage. You right. can just do it in one thing and yeah, it's it's be, it's all even the just the hierarchical organization of it. You have this whole the university, which is the global mm -hmm. the whole thing. And then um, you have you have the faculties, which could be each of, each of them. Have, it could be a network, right? And then, yeah, whatever is needed, um, you could also have other networks. Um, another good example would be uh, think about like, well, maybe anything that is. Um, I've not actually worked on such a project, I have to say, but anything that is uh, anything you think of can be a multi-site. Maybe you want to make it uh, multilingual, and if but if it's already multi-site without being multilingual, you could make it multi-network, and then each each site becomes a network where it's, the translations are the sites. For, for the multilingual yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would that could be an interesting use case because you can always think of well if. if once the one site has always has to work completely the same, like all the translations of it, but the other sites are separate, so then, then you could use some alternative for that as well. Yeah, sounds very, very interesting. And uh, from your experience working with non technical stuff, um, were there any problems for non technical stuff to manage uh, to maintain afterwards? Uh, to work in with uh, WordPress multi site or WordPress multi site network? Or um, it's as easy and like uh, user friendly as yeah. uh, our usual WordPress different? I definitely think, well, if you expose uh, people to multi site, you need to 
train them uh, more than with regular world cars. Uh, well, it's, or maybe not more because it's not that much that much content to learn, but uh, it definitely needs extra attention. Um, I think. I generally think multi-site is definitely less user-friendly than the rest of WordPress, um, which which is which I think about as it's 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 kind of logic because WordPress, well, multi-site was merged almost at 3.0, I think, and um, and that and that, so it was merged into an already old code base, right? And, but it and so it kind of started years after the original WordPress had started, mm -hmm. so it had less time to get that good. Mm -hmm. like, I see it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, so I, I, um, I think there's a reason that there's a, that you need to go into the config file to actually allow it. It should not be as trivial to set up because you need to be aware of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I absolutely have the goal of getting to a point where it's as user-friendly as the rest. And hopefully, at some point, we don't even need to go to the uh, So, this is the one of the points of for press multi-site development improvement in future, right? Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, any other um, examples of vision how it should be, how it should be transformed? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so of well, we, at the moment, we are working on uh, improving the. The APIs themselves, because they are messy and old, um, they're still the, what, what was originally merged to the most part, um, and this is the, this will then be a foundation to to actually work with all the user facing ends uh, in the in the admin. Uh, we want to be we want to be a user of the REST API. We want to improve the UI of the admin screens, um, uh, particularly the edit edit uh, no adding a user screen mm -hmm. is messy. Because we have two forms, one for existing, one for new users, which confuses me every time I want to do that. 